I am Nutrix the Synth Guy, and today I'm talking about installing macOS 12 on an Intel MacBook. I have an old, seven years old MacBook Pro that is an i7 16 gig of RAM, one terabyte of SSD drive. So it's still a very powerful computer by today's standard. Of course, it's not an M1, but still, if I don't need to update now, I won't update now. I'll wait until, for the same price, I get a better, more powerful computer, maybe in two years. So I've been waiting and waiting to install the OS on it. I had iOS 10.15 on it, and I didn't update it since. Now, Apple has stated that the latest macOS for the Intel CPUs is or will be a Mac OS 12. 13 should not run it. It should be only for the Apple Silicon, which is, you know, it's okay. It's part of evolution, you know? So I'm kind of in the moment where the iOS is about a year and a half old now. Most developers should have updated their drivers and software so they run with the OS, not the Intel chip, because it has been running for years and years and years. It's now time to update that computer to have the latest, and not just the latest, the latest it will be able to run and the last, because it won't be able to update to another one after that. When I do this, I want to be able to run back to the actual state of the device today. So I do not just a backup, I do a clone. And I use SuperDuper, which is a cool little app I've been using for years and years and years. It does one thing very, very efficiently, is doing backups or clones of your hard drives. So this is SuperDuper. You have simply, you're gonna say, I wanna copy my hard drive to, and then you decide on another hard drive. I've got this uh, SSD drive, which is crucial, which is a small SSD, square SSD drive, same space. I suggest that you always take something that is equal value, at least. So you've got a one terabyte internal hard drive. I copy it to a one terabyte SSD drive externally. It does format the new drive, the external one, and it copies everything. It's even bootable after that. So if I have any type of problem, I could boot up from that drive and work on things that needs to be done. If I need to recopy back onto it because by installing the latest OS on the internal drive, something is not compatible. I'm, I have hardware that doesn't respond to it. The drivers are not right. I don't know. And I will really only know until I set up everything in my studio. Because I know if I read online, people say it works, but you never know if everything works because I have my own setup with my own drivers, with my own hardware and ex you know extension and all that stuff in my computer. So some of it might not work. Actually, I did that copy. It, it's, it was long. It takes about an hour and a half to do that new drive. Even with two SSD, internal SSD and a clone SSD drive, it took a lot of time. But then you've got a copy. Now, the only thing you might not work right when you do that kind of cloning is the licenses. Some of the software that I have and plugins that I have, you probably have them too, they need licenses. It depends on how the licenses works, if it's linked to the hardware of the computer or if it's linked to a code on the drive. By moving it from another drive, it might lose it or not. Keep that in mind if you do that. So I've got my copy. I do the install by the Mac OS itself runs for about half an hour. When all of that is done, you boot up the OS and you have access to the normal OS. Now, my question was, does everything work the way it should be? When I did that, I got a couple of new, uh, I would say error messages when I boot up the first time the new OS. I got some error messages, but not that messages saying that this software will not run. It was mostly telling me that it's the last OS on which these extension drivers, mostly extension and, and libraries of codes on the hard drive, uh, that these will be the last OS to support them. So you should ask your developer for new versions for the next OS, which I understand. And it's not a real problem because 
this computer will not be able to run the next OS. So anyway, next OS, I'll have to have new drivers because it's going to be my M1, 2, 3. I don't know when I'm going to buy a new one, but it's not going to be an Intel because Apple doesn't do Intel anymore. So that logic for me, it's interesting to know, but it's not a real problem. Fine. So the next thing was basically I open all my music production software and I don't have the latest. I have Ableton Live 10, uh, the suite, so 10.14 something. It works without a, a glitch. I mean, it turns on, it sings, it plays. I can load my old, my old session. Then I add some, by loading my old session, I had some plugin issues. Some plugins say, well, you need to install this one, this plugin. That, so some of the plugins needed to be updated. I understand, but they're, they're not Ableton plugin. They're just my plugins from different companies. So turn off Ableton Live. I tried Roland Zenbeats. Of course it works. I have the latest version of Zenbeats. It works without a problem. Personas Studio One version four, but I still have the four, 4.62. Work without a problem, without a question. All my session was able to run. Again, same logic with some of the plugins telling me that I needed to update. Fine, I did that also. Reason 11, 11 11.39 something. I had some software crashes the first time because of the errors asking me, oh, this is there, this is not here, it's missing this plugin. So the next step was basically to update all the plugins. (laughs) And I've got more than a thousand plugins. Yes, I was myself surprised about that, but it's, it's, it's a... It's a wrong way to say it because I have some plugins I have in VST2, VST3, and Odoo Unit. So some of them, I've got three versions of them in my computer. So I don't really have a thousand different plugins. I have a thousand different version of them. And I probably have three to 400 plugins only, only way too much. I use your Arturia software center and was able to update everything that needed to my updates, I needed to update all of this. That now is now all updated. UVI portal update. So everything that is UVI was updated. I'm not sure honestly that these updates were linked to the OS. Some of them might be making it easier to work, but uh, I think mostly is that some of them I did not you know, install updates for the last six months or a year. So poop, it told me, oh, there's a new version, you should install it. So I did install them. And of course, it works better. It's kind of not a surprise. So I was able to install the UVI. Now see, it's actually gathering information, tells me what's to be needs to be installed. I have to reinstall these things. Then I keep product manager to install the different updates that needs to be updated. Then I needed to update Isotope plugins. Mostly were not a lot of things that needed to be updated for that. I did that last summer. And since then for the version I have, cause I still have Isotope seven, they're at 10 now. I've got the R- RX seven Odoo editor works well. And the portal to actually tell me what needs, needs to be up- updated. Nothing had to be updated. The old seven version of my plugin still works. For Cherry Audio and for JForce software, uh, I needed to go for each plugin, turn them on once and says, oh, you need to update, need click on update, put my information and add the latest version of it. The real only thing I needed to reinstall was the driver for the TR8S from Roland and the driver for the MC707. All the other hardware that I have need no drivers, so it's, you know, they're USB compatible, the USB class compliant, that's really important. But then I looked into the information, the MC707, with the latest firmware update, you can actually make it uh, into class compliant, which I did after that, because I don't need the uh, multiple audio in and multiple audio out to the MC-77 because I basically use it as a, a sequencer for the rest of the gear and I record the stereo out into that. And if I want to record a multiple output, I'll do it. I'll switch the internal 
um, USB mode into what they call vendor, which is the Roland mode, or into generic, which is the one I have right now, which is class compliant. You can do that on a TR-8S. Again, not a big deal because there's physical MIDI connectors on it. So uh, I can live with that, but that's the only thing. So it's been an easy update, honestly. And I, I'm surprised at how simple it was. It was, it really just took me time to update everything. But now I'm gonna finish filming that video. I'm gonna edit in the iPad and I'm gonna finish the mix on Studio One like I do most of the time. So if you got any question, if you have anything else you want me to test on Mac OS 12, if I have it, I'll test it. That's it for today. See you soon. Make more music and finish your songs. <laughs>